tutorial, I'll show you how to add some hidden pictures to your Google Slides for a fun escape the room activity. Let's get started. So here's my escape the room. Uh, this slide is in view only. So this is how your students will see it when you post it in Google Classroom as either a material or as an assignment that's view only. So there are some hidden pictures around this room that you have to click to find. So when I click on this picture, there's nothing. But up here on this birdcage, oh, I get my first clue. And I have my first clue. And I'm going to do this math problem. And then I go back to the slide and click here to go to the Google form to submit my response. I put in my answer and my response. And the second question, the space to put my answer in, doesn't unlock until I get this one right. So, um, so that's basically it. There's several clues hidden around the room. And here's the second one. They might not find them in order, so they have to keep looking. And once they get all the clues unlocked, they've escaped the room. So let's learn how to make this fun activity. Let's get started making our escape the room. First, I'm just going to clean up my workspace a little bit. And I'm going to click down at the top, drag down, and hit delete in order to get a nice blank slate. There's other ways you can do it too. You could right click over here and select apply layout and choose blank. Uh, but that's how I like to get a clean workspace. And I'm going to title my presentation to change the background. So I'm going to select an image and I'll do a Google image search. Okay, so let's see what we have here. What would be a good room? You can really pick any of them. This one looks good and insert and done. Okay, I picked this one because there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, that we could make into clues. So you can do a themed room if you want. If you're going to have a theme to your escape the room, you can pick a certain uh, background, like a Hogwarts background or whatever you want. You can also add some stuff to this picture if you want, and I'll show you quickly how to do that. I'm going to press insert image and then search the web. And you can see these puppies all have backgrounds. So what I'm going to add is the word transparent and that's better. So I like this guy, so I'm going to add him right over here, just drag and drop him, and then resize. And I resize, I grab one of the corners so it maintains the same width and height ratio, and a little bit smaller, and put this guy on the couch. And you can add whatever you like to this room, as many or as few things as you want. You, in fact, don't have to add anything because when we add the clues, we can make anything in this room into a clue. Okay, so transparent birdcage is my next one. And you can hang that from the ceiling. And again, I'm just gonna size it down. So you get the idea. I wanna add some text for directions. So um, let me add a text box. And I'll just click on the page to add that text box. So now what I'm going to do is just resize this text box a little bit. But the, one of the problems with this text box is I can't really see it. It's not really standing out. So let me insert a shape. I'm going to insert a rectangle. And I'll just click on the page to create my rectangle. And I'm going to drag it over, make it a little longer, just drag it by the end. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to make sure all that text fits in there. And I might want to make my text a little bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to give this shape a border. It has a faint border right now, but I really want it to pop. So I can pick a border color. You can pick any color you want, and you can pick a border weight. I like an eight-point border because it really stands out. Now I'm just going to resize this text box a little bit, and when I get that crosshairs, I'm going to drag it down. Uh-oh, where'd it go? I drew the shape after the text, so the text is behind the shape. So I'm going to right-click, two fingers on the trackpad, go to Order, and it's the rectangle, it's the shape that's highlighted right now, so I'm going to send that to the back. 
And now you can see that my text shows up. Okay, so um, you can put this anywhere you like. You can move it around. Um, you can size it down a little bit. You can make the font bigger, change the font. So I'm gonna select a different font. I like Oswald and maybe make it, let's try 24. Okay, so that's not a bad size. It's a little uh, crowded in that text box. I just accidentally moved the box. So I'm gonna press Command Z to go back. And let me make this text box bigger. And then I also need to make the shape bigger. And if you want to change the color of the background of the shape, you just do it right here. So I'm going to select white. Well, I had the text box selected, so it changed the text box to white. I want the shape to be white. So I have to make sure that I have the right thing highlighted. Okay, there's my shape. That's what I want to be white. There we go. That's better. And again, like I said, you can move that around, put it wherever you like it. Um, so now we need to make some clues that we can hide in here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first clue. So I'm going to go to File, New, Presentation, because I want my clues and separate presentations. So again, I'm just going to clean up my workspace. and title my presentation. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna border on this page. So I am going to go to background and this time I'm gonna select a color. So you can select blue um, if that blue is a little too much but I kinda, I want it in that blue family. Well, first of all, you could just select a different one right here um, or you can go to custom and kind of play around with it a little till you get the color that you want. Okay, great. But I want, I just want it to be a border, not a whole blue slide. So what I need to do is go to insert shape and put in a rectangle and then just draw a big rectangle. You can either just click down and resize it or you can um, just draw a big one like I just did. So what I want to do now is I want to center it. So I'm going to center on page, click on arrange, and then center on page horizontally, arrange, center on page vertically. There we go. That looks good. And now I am going to uh, put in a text box. So let's select text box right here on the menu bar and click down. And I want this to be a pretty big text box, so I'm going to resize it and start typing in your problem. And I don't really like that font, so I'm going to choose a different font. This is a good one and a different size. Okay, so once we have our first clue in place, we can go ahead and insert it back in our image. So I'm going to click Share, and just make sure that your share settings are Anyone Can View, and Copy Link. Now I've got the link, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to insert the link in this picture. So first we have to make our hidden button, if you will, for the link. So let me insert a shape. Okay, so let's make this into a clue. You could use an oval or a rectangle for this and just get it to kind of cover the shape that you want. Uh, but I want this to be invisible, so I need to make it transparent. So I'm going to go to my background, choose transparent, and go to my border and make that transparent. So now when I click off of that, you can see it's invisible. So now that I've highlighted this shape, I'm going to put my link in. So I put insert link and just paste the link right there. And now that's a link. So we all we have to do is do that with all of our clues. And then we'll go set up a Google form to accept the answers.
Okay, I'm going to go to a new Google form by typing forms.new. And now this is where the students will input their answers. So let's title our form and title up here as well. When I clicked there, the title just automatically showed up. You can give whatever description or instructions you want. And the first question I always put on a form is name. That automatically changed to short answer, and I do want to make it required. And now I'm just going to select this plus sign for the next question. Okay, so this one, I do not want to be a multiple choice. I want it to be a short answer, and it is required. Um, and here's the important part. I'm going to click on these three dots right next to required and select response validation. So what we want is a number equal to 531. And then you can put an error text. Okay, oops, that's not it. Try again. So that's it for the first question. Once they get that question correct, they will go on to the next section. So you, there's some options here. Um, we just want them to continue to the next section, so that's fine. So then we're gonna have clue number two. Again, any description that you like, and I'm gonna add a question. So that's my question. Again, I want this to be short answer, required, and response validation, number equal to, and my custom error text. And I just continue like this until I've done this for all four clues. And then there's a couple of things. On settings, I always collect email addresses. It's a good practice because if I ever forget that name field, I can still tell who did it. Um, you can limit to one response if you choose to. And presentation, this is where the important part is. So I am going to unclick, show link to submit another response. They don't need that. And the confirmation message. Okay, and save. And then um, when you're all done with this, you take the link, copy it, and go back to your escape the room. I'm going to put my Bitmoji in my room using the Bitmoji extension from Chrome. I just typed in pose because you can always get a good just standing Bitmoji that way with no words or anything. I'm going to select this one and drag it down. A little too far down. And let's see, I need to move this out of the way, so I'm just going to drag it, uh, drag down to get both the shape and the text box at the same time. Move that up. And now let me see, I want to put my, I want to put a little um, cartoon bubble around my, uh, next to my Bitmoji so she can talk. Insert image, search the web. Transparent call out. Somebody taught me that after I didn't know what it was called in another tutorial. And I'm going to put this right here. Size it down using the arrow on the corner and put it right here. And then I'm going to insert a text box from the menu bar and just put it right in here. Um, I'm going to just move this a little bit. Once I get those crosshairs, I can move it up. And I'm going to highlight the text so I can choose the same font for consistency. Um, oh, that's a, that font's a little smaller, so I can size up just a little bit. Oh, that's a little too big. Let's try 16. Split the difference. Okay. So now I'm going to highlight the word here, insert a link, and then that link that I grabbed in forms, I'm putting right here and you can see now this takes me to my Google form and only the first question shows up and let's try a wrong answer first. Click next. Oh, that's not it. Try again. So we got our error message. Now let's try the correct answer. 
and it takes us to the next clue. So you can see how this goes. I put in four clues and four sections on my form. But so that's it. That's the basics. That's what you need to know. Have fun creating your escape the room. It's a great way to add some gamification to your lessons. Okay, so I'm here in my Google Classroom. This isn't my real classroom, but you get the idea. And I'm going to go to Classwork to assign this activity, Create. And you can either do it as a material if you just want this to be a fun activity that you're not really going to grade. Um, I'm going to choose Assignment for this one. So let's title our activity. And give whatever instructions that we like and then select Add. From our Google Drive, and it should be right here at the top because we just recently worked on it, and it's the one I called Escape the Room. So students can view file. That's the one that I want, and it can be graded or ungraded, whatever you like. You can do a due date, and I like to select a topic to keep it organized, and you can either assign it now or you can schedule it for later. And that's it. You've made your Escape the Room activity. Thank you.